mercies that we have not consumed. His compassions, they fail not, but they're new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Lord, to me, truly, it is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord, to be amongst living witnesses miracles that there is power in the name of Jesus the Christ somebody give God praise for miracles he's still a miracle worker I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad about it he's still a miracle working God we love him for all that he does. Amen. 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 We greet you. We greet you in that matchless name of Jesus the Christ. For it's at the name of Jesus that every knee will bow. Of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. What are the things in heaven? Angels veil their faces. What are the things in the earth? Men rejoice at the name Jesus. What are the things under the earth? Demons tremble at the name of Almighty God. And we love Him for it. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you. We love you for this moment in time that you have given us. You knew we would be here long before the world began. You knew that we would be standing here behind your sacred desk to, to declare the unsearchable riches of Christ. You knew, God, long before the world began, God, that we would be survivors, not only of natural disasters, God, but survivors from cancer, survivors from strokes, survivors from all manners of illnesses. You knew, God, that we would be your people. And Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for gracing us with life. We thank you for gracing us with mobility. We thank you for gracing us with a place to worship. Now, God, we pray, God, that you would use the preacher. God, let me speak words that not be of my own self, but let me speak as an oracle of you. Speak in the midst of your people, great God, that you are. And we promise to give your name glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, someone say amen. And amen. And amen. You can take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Why are we still in the mode of praise? Let's give God praise for our shepherd, our pastor, the watchman over our soul. Amen. To all of you, my father's children, let's jump right into the word of the Lord. There is a word, amen, from the Lord to encourage our young people, but to encourage us collectively as well. Amen. Thank you. Thank you to all of you who joined us in our red and black. Amen. Thank you. You look good. You look good. You look good. And we thank you. Go to with me to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 19 is where uh, the Lord has given us an assignment this morning. Acts chapter 19. We're going to read verses 1 and 2. We're going to begin reading with the King James Version. Acts chapter 19, beginning with verses 1, on a journey through verse 2. When you have it, you can say, Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 19, we're going to read verses 1 and 2. The Bible reads on this wise, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, Catch this, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. The Message Bible says, Now it happened that while Apollos was away in Corinth, Paul made his way down through the mountains, came to Ephesus, 
and happened on some disciples there. The first thing he said was, did ye receive the Holy Spirit when ye believed? Did you take God into your mind only? Or did you also embrace him with your heart? Did he get inside you? They answered, we've never even heard of that a Holy Spirit, a God within us. And so then faith cometh by hearing. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. And they said unto him, we have not so much as heard. We, we haven't even heard it. We don't even know what you're talking about, man. We want to preach from a subject entitled, Have You Heard? Have, 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 have you heard? Have you heard? Have you heard? Before, before we jump on this text, I feel the need to give a little background to our young people concerning the book of Acts. Some theologians, some people who, who study the Bible and or study God, the word and theology, theo, God, uh, ology, meaning the study of, those people who study God, study uh, the words that were recorded by man from God, uh, the book of Acts, they suggest it is the fifth gospel. Uh, we know currently, we know currently that there are four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, and Luke being synoptic Gospels, meaning they are similar. They, they have some of the same accounts uh, inside of them. The teenagers, the teenagers, the teenagers in the youth class, we, we know this because we discussed that Matthew uh, was a tax collector uh -huh, who wrote his book. Mark, who was a teenager at the time of Christ's early ministry wrote uh, a book full of action. If you're going to read Mark, it's, it's full of action. It, it detailed all of the many miracles that Christ wrought while he was here on the earth. He was able to do so. He was able to detail and to record all of the many miracles, all of the many actions. Glory to God because uh, in the young people's term, he had an inside plug. Yeah, he, he, had, he had the plug. He had the plug. His mother was a devout follower of Christ, and she frequently allowed Jesus and the disciples to use her home from time to time. And so Mark, Mark, when he writes, when he writes his gospel, he had an inside look on all of the many miracles that Jesus performed by the hands of God. Can we say amen there? Yeah, so Matthew wrote his gospel. He, he wrote his gospel from a tax collector lens. Mark, a teenager, wrote his gospel, glory to God, uh, an action gospel. Luke, Luke was a physician. Uh, he, he was a doctor. He, he, he wrote his book and, and, and he left his occupation as a doctor to follow Jesus, to, to tell all of the things that Jesus Jesus did do and did say. Then, then, then John, one of the original disciples of Christ, just like Matthew, he too writes his own book. But, but, but John writes from uh, a heavenly perspective. He begins, he begins his book by saying, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Each of these men begin their gospel a little different. But I think, but I think young people, it's worth conversing about because it helps us to understand why Acts is considered the fifth gospel. Mm -hmm. Matthew, Matthew begins by detailing the genealogical line of Jesus Christ. He tells us about the 42 generations from Abraham to Jesus. Glory to God. He tells us, he tells us a lot of liars like Abraham. Rapists like Tamnar and harlots and women of the evening, prostitutes, if you will, like Rahab. He goes on to tell us about lonely and desperate women like Ruth and Naomi, murderers like David and adulterers like Bathsheba. All of these personalities made, were made up of who Christ was. I think it's good to know, I think it's good to know, glory to God, that, that, that Christ has some messed up stuff in his life. I think, I, think, I think that's good stuff for us to know because it helps us, glory to God, to embrace Christ with our mess ups. It helps us, helps us to embrace Christ from a place knowing that we ain't got it all together. And just like Jesus had some junk in his 
from because of the line that he came from. So do you. Yeah. Glory to God. But, but, but it's a good thing to know that no matter how messed up you are, no matter how much junk is in your trunk, no matter how many skeletons are in your closet, there's still room at the cross. I wish I had somebody to talk here. There, 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 there's still room for you at the cross of Jesus. However, the things, the things, the things that made up Christ, the things that made up his DNA, it did not keep him from fulfilling his purpose in the earth. It, it did not keep him from dying for humanity. It did not keep him, glory to God, for dying for the sins of the whole world. And you, young people, you cannot allow who mama was and, and who daddy was and, and who auntie and uncle was and even who the people on your road and on your street and in your community said you're going to be dictate who you become. Yeah, 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 yeah. Their history is not your history. I wish I had a witness here. Who they were is not who you have to be. Yeah, come on, somebody. Who, 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 what they did is not what you have to do. Because if any man be in Christ, God said he is a new creature. I wish I had a church here. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become have the power, you have the power to make something of yourself and to do something positive with the hand you've been dealt. Say something to me. None of us, not all of us, glory to God, but we're, we're, we're raised with a silver spoon, but that doesn't dictate you getting a silver spoon. Come on, somebody say amen there. Not, 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 not. Some of us were raised in the projects. Talk here. Some of us were raised, glory to God, mama had one card, her and daddy shared that card. Y'all not talking. Some of us, some of us, some of us were raised, glory to God, in the backwoods. Glory some of us were raised in one bedroom homes. Come on here. Glory to God. But that does not dictate who we are. That does not dictate who we can become. Because as long as God is on our side. I wish I had a church here. Glory to God. We, we got to begin to speak positive to our young people. Yes, you were raised poor, but that don't mean you got to be poor. Yes, you might have been raised broke, but that don't mean you got to be broke. Yes, you might have been raised on food stamps, but that don't mean you got to stay on them. Come on, somebody help me talk here. Glory to God. You, you, you can be somebody. You can do some things. You can raise up from where you are. You can be the head and not the tail. You can be above and not the knee. You can be the lender and not the borrower. You can be blessed in the city. Blessed in the field. Blessed going out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So this morning, this morning, I stand, I stand with Pastor Brinkley to break the systems of generational curses. We, we break the demons that's had you hindered and had you backed up. We, we break, we break, we break who mama was. We break who daddy was. We break what they said you were going to be. We break even the negative stuff said you would never be nothing. You never amount to anything. We break it in Jesus' name. And we declare, we decree that you are somebody. That your life, it does matter. God's chosen child. You, you're the apple of God's eye. You belong to the most high God. Can I help somebody? You're not defeated. Uh -huh. You're not a loser. You're not beat up, bruised up, and bound up. But you're free in Jesus' name. Can I help somebody? You will go to God. You will become somebody. You will be promoted. We're looking at the next CEO in this room. We're looking at the next lawyers and doctors and teachers and preachers and, and good somebody. We're looking at the next mayor in this room. Somebody help me here. We're not looking at folk that's going to jail and folk on the street corners and folk that's strung out. We're looking at God's people. We're looking at up people. We're looking at good people. We're looking at healthy, wealthy, and prosperous people. Young girls, young girls, young girls, young girls, young girls, let me tell you, you're more, you're more, you're more than lips and
right along the way. <laughs> Again, we know that Mark's gospel was written to showcase the miracles from John to Paul. So Mark begins his gospel by discussing John's life and ministry. Luke begins his gospel by giving details of the moments before, during, and after the birth of Christ. And finally, John begins his gospel with the details of the heavenly oneness of Christ and God the Father. It is important to know who wrote the gospels and how they began because when Acts opens up, it speaks about Christ. It even has direct sayings from Christ. So there's no way to have recorded these sayings of Christ on earth unless somebody had walked with Jesus, talked with Jesus, help me somebody. And hence why many believe that Luke was the writer of Acts because he walked with Jesus, followed Jesus. And yes, young people, young people, the book of Acts was written to display the many miracles, the many miracles, the many signs, the many wonders. Luke recorded these things. He, he jotted these things down. But, but, but one of the problems I have with Luke's recording and what theologians deem this book as, as Acts of the Apostles is that they left out by what power the Apostles did these things. They, 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 they left out, they left out, they left out. They left out that it was not by their own strength. It, it, it was not by their own might. It was not. It was not by their own ability that they were able to do the things that they did. Glory to God. But it had to be by the power of the Holy. It had to be. It had to be. It had to be. It had to be the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God for Peter and John to walk at the hour of prayer. To a place called the gate called beautiful find a man there looking for money glory to God and they look at him and say silver and gold we don't have but such as I have give I unto thee by the power of Jesus Christ rise up and walk it had to be the Holy Ghost of Peter to go down to Cornelius' house and preach Jesus unto them and the Bible said as he spoke these words the Holy Ghost fell on everybody in the head to be the Holy Ghost for women to be locked up in a room praying glory to God and Peter locked behind bars here comes the angel out of nowhere, frees them and takes them to the house where they were praying and had to be the Holy Ghost. For Paul and Silas to pray behind jail bars, sing a few songs and pray a couple prayers. Here comes the earthquake and everybody is free and had to be the Holy Ghost. Had to be the Holy Ghost. Had to be the Holy Ghost. It was not by power. It was not by might. But it was by the Spirit of Almighty. Young people, young people, you gotta know. You gotta know. Young people, you gotta know. If we're gonna work in ministry, we got to be filled. If you if you're gonna work in ministry, you're gonna do things in church, you got to have the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. If you're gonna be somebody in God's kingdom, you got to have the Holy Spirit. Singing in the choir isn't good enough. Yeah, having a title isn't good enough. Coming to all the different events isn't good enough. You walk in the runway this evening, they gonna help you. You gonna have to have be filled with the Holy Spirit. Somebody help me here. In order for you to go through this life, you gotta be filled. You gotta be filled. You gotta be filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about filled with a dance, filled with a run, filled with a shout, filled with a song. I'm talking about filled with the power from Almighty. So and so and so and so and so when we look, when we look, when we look at Acts chapter 19, we have to embrace the text from a place understanding it's not just a normal text, it's a Holy Ghost text. Yeah, but when we, when we come on when we come on Acts 19, we have to embrace it. We have to look at it like that. The Bible said there were two men, one by the name of Apollos, the other by the name of Paul. If you ain't on the train, you're getting left, because I'm almost out of here. Glory to God. He tells them, he tells them, Apollos and Paul, they're together, they're together, they're together, and they decide to go separate ways. You remember Apollos, Apollos was a man in Corinthians that Paul had to defend his position on. Paul says, I could have came with eloquence of speech, I could have came with swelling words. He said, but I didn't feel that that was necessary. I came to you with demonstration. I came to you with the power of Almighty God. And young people, I got to tell you something. It's nice that we do all the events we do. I'm appreciative that you show up when you do. Glory to God. But I'm looking for power and demonstration. I'm not looking for you just to show up to the event. I'm looking for your life to be changed. Your heart to be changed. You to be somebody. You to go up and change. Paul said, I'm going to Corinth. Paul said, all right, bro, I'm going to Ephesus. And when he 
begins to Ephesus, the Bible says he comes across John's disciples. <laughs> Glory to God. And when he gets to John's disciples, he said, I got one question. He said, I know that you are a new convert. I know that you just gave your heart to Christ. I know that you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. He said, I know that with confession, with the mouth confession is made known unto salvation. He said, I know that with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. He said, I know all of those things. I know that you're saved. I know that you've given up your worldly ways. I know, glory to God, that you committed your life to Christ. He said, but there's one question I need to ask you. Have you been filled since the day you believed? It messed me up. It messed me up when I read the text because there's a theology right now that says as soon as you get, uh, as soon as you give your life to Christ, you get in the power of the Holy Spirit. But if that happened all the time, Paul would have never asked this question. So what that lets me know, young people, is that you can be saved and not feel. And, and Pastor, Pastor, when I found it out, it helped me, it helped me, it helped me because now I understand how full glory God can jump in church and not speak in the parking lot. Now we know, now we know, now we know, now we know how people can raise their hands and live and say we love you Jesus and we worship you and we adore you and roll their eyes and talk about you behind your back because
story and story. I'm not going to go on my way out. And so he says to them, says to them, we have not even heard what you're talking about. We have not even heard about this Holy Ghost stuff. And so he told them, then that means you were baptized in the first baptism. You received forgiveness for sins, but you have not received the second gift. You received salvation in that street. But now it's time for you to give up something to receive the second baptism. Glory to God, you got to understand that you can't receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and live any kind. Somebody say amen to Young people, you got to understand if you want the Holy Spirit, you got to repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the Bible said you then shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the, the, the John's disciples were not crazy. They were not off of their rocks. They had got the first portion. But the second portion was then to come. And the Bible said that Paul called them over. He said since you didn't get it when you gave your life to Christ. Now nah, I want to give it to you. Since you have not heard, let me introduce you to him. And I stopped by just for a little while for everybody who has not heard about the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me introduce you to him. The Bible declares that he called them over, called them around in a circle. And the Bible said he took his hands and began to lay it on them. And the Bible said immediately everybody was filled with the Holy Ghost. We don't do it much anymore, Pastor, because folk have abused the laying on of hands. But every now and again, sometimes you need somebody to touch and agree to lay their hands on you so that everything God has in heaven can be a part of your life in the earth. Young people, I just want to be able to lay my hands, my hands on your gifts, my hands on your purpose, my hands on your destiny, because I refuse to lead a young people that started one way and ten years later they're the same way. I made up in my mind that Joshua's generation we're not just about events and catching titles but there's going to be some power working in us. Look through. 
know there's about two or three people that can say everything I heard, I found it to be true. Everything I heard, I found it to be right. Everything I heard, I found it to be accurate. I validated what he said. And there's a mighty burning fire living on the inside of me. How can you smile after all you've been through? Because I got something down on the inside. And you keep on praising after having a bad week. Because there's something down on the inside.
know about long before the world began. You knew it would be right. Talking about a power that you left the church. A power. God that has no constituency. Doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, your race, your ethnic background. Doesn't even matter what religious denomination you belong to. You left this power for us all. All nations. You left that power. How do we know? Because Joel said in the last days. You promised to pour out your spirit upon all flesh, not one group or two, but all flesh. And so, Father, we thank you that we are a part of the all flesh. Father, today we can leave this place and leave this altar knowing that we've heard about your Holy Spirit. We don't want to be the ones that come in contact with another and they ask us, have we heard? And we say no. We want to be able to say, not only have we heard, but we've also been filled. Father, in the day we live now, there are so many different things, so many different positive programs that are trying to steer our young people in the right way. But Father, what? And those things are good, those intentions are good. But Father, at the end of the day, the only thing that really can turn this wayward generation around is you. And your Holy Spirit. So Father, teach us. Teach us not to come up with new gimmicks and new methods. But teach us to urge people to know you. And to urge people to be filled with you. Because that's when true power is activated. Father, help us to walk in the Spirit. Father, we can only walk in the Spirit if the Spirit lives in us. We can only follow after the Spirit if we let the Spirit lead us. And so, Father, help us to rely on your Spirit. Father, give us, give us, give us discernment to know what's your Spirit and what's not your Spirit. For, Father, you said that your Spirit would lead us into all truth. It would lead us into into that which would bring glory and honor to your name. Your spirit wouldn't have us do anything contrary to your word and your will for our lives. So Father, help us to recognize your voice because you promised your sheep would hear your voice and a stranger they would not follow. We've been following all these different things because God, we do not know or come to recognize your voice. So Father, we're asking in a sincere and a humble way, fill us with your spirit. Allow your spirit to give us eyes like you so that we can see what you see. Not see the bad in others, but see where you want others to be. But then those of us, God, that have already been filled, we know that there's one filling, but there's many touches. Touch us again. Touch us, God. Allow that fire that once burned to start a blaze again. Father, we need you. If there was ever a time, God, that we needed you, it's right now. Bless us and we shall be blessed. Keep us and we shall be kept. Father, at the end of the day, grant us a closer walk with thee. We promise to praise you, glorify you, and honor you. In Jesus' name, someone say amen. Amen.